I'm Tara. And I'm Shannon. We're married business partners with a thriving company and a one-of-a-kind crew. But that's not where our story begins. We believe that your past doesn't get to define your future. And for over a decade, we've been cultivating a team built on second chances. <laughs> Each day, our crew makes a choice. We decide to be better than yesterday. Together, as a family, we're not just rehabbing homes, we're rehabbing lives. So come join us. This is Rehab. A lot of people can identify with obsessive behavior. So when you're like good at something, like you're more gravitated to want to continue to do it. So like at the beginning, I wanted to work really hard and I was in the practice room relentlessly. The feelings you get when you play music and like the progress and like you're going through the trenches early on learning an instrument, but like you develop callus and like, you develop these uh, techniques and you learn new tricks and then all of a sudden like you start getting high on that you know and a lot of like really good musicians can probably relate but like like i would sit down and just like want to practice my scales early on with piano because i knew the importance of it because i'd be like "Ooh, i'm getting good um it's it's hard to think like was i obsessed with like the attention i got from it or the music I grew up in a really good house, man. Uh, middle class, suburbia, and uh, a lot of the times in early recovery, I would think I wasn't really quite an addict because I didn't come from a household that uh, they were using and doing bad things. Um, and it wasn't until later in life, man, that I realized that it's, it's things about ourselves that makes us addicts, man. It's, it's this obsessive nature I have that when I picked up the drugs, I could never lay it down. And uh, growing up, just like a lot of you guys, man, I suffered with insecurity, man. I would look at other people and I would be like, if I was only them, I would be happy. Um, I went to school and I wanted to study music, man. And that was the one thing I knew that I wanted to do, but the problem with that is like you have specific seats you have to sit in, man, and you have to audition for it and you have to, uh, sometimes you don't get the first chair and you think less of yourself a lot of the times and you compare yourself to other people. And in that environment, man, uh, I'm not paying my saxophone professor to tell me what I'm good at. I'm paying him to tell me how to get better. And I was a young kid, man. I didn't know how to handle those emotions. Being young, pressure comes on. And I'm sure there's college kids all over the place that discover pressure, but me personally, I never experienced how to handle it very well. <laughs> I will never forget this. And I don't know why I'll never forget this because it was so traumatizing for me, but there was a class called Wednesday Recital. My first year, they had me play this piece and it's an extremely hard piece um, I think usually sophomores and juniors play it, but as a freshman, my saxophone professor was like, why don't you try playing this piece? Uh, extremely difficult. Everyone who was a music major had to play in front of everybody in that. So I was preparing a piece to play in front of all these people and uh, worked so hard on it. Um, and then I get there and I was ready to play it. Choked. Couldn't remember a, a single note, wanted to do so good. Um, and also I put a lot of self-worth on what people thought of me and here's everybody and they're like, he's, he's nobody. Um, so the first time I picked up drugs, it made me feel good at what I was doing. It made me feel great. Um, 
I could play any piece I wanted to and not care what other people thought about myself. And not only just that, it would make me feel music in ways I never felt before, man. I would, I would ride the wave that was music and I would like understand things and uh, thought that that's how you, what you had to do to discover those feelings. You know, I can get in front of a room full of people and not care and be able to play. Uh, and it, it made me feel good. And also I was attracted to the nightlife, man. I was attracted to like, like, where's the next party? Who's got what? Where's this and where's that? And uh, it was appealing to me, man. Um, and that was when I really started getting into drugs. Come to find out where I'm sitting today, I had a disease, man. Um, and drugs were only the symptom of that disease. He had no experience whatsoever with any type of trade work, uh, no painting, no construction. He didn't know how to read a measuring tape or even hold a paintbrush. Um, so he was super green when, when uh, he started with us. Um, but we, we knew that uh, with Chris's level of commitment um, and his, his, like, his desire to, to learn a trade, like he really wanted to learn a trade, you know? If you want to learn from somebody, why not learn from the best? I'm more under Tara's wing right now than anybody else and uh, I'm more going towards the faux finish end um, because I think it's cool man it seems more artistic like you got texture sponges I'm using like art brushes and learning like how to layer things to give it a certain look um, and I think like the artist in me like like really like draws towards that you know Instead of wor worrying about like big walls, like I'm worried about like this one thing and to make it look the best I can make it look. And I love stuff like that, man. It, it appeals to me a lot. All right, so today we're gonna do a cabinet refinish job. Uh, so what that will entail is a lot of prep. So what we'll do is we'll prep uh, the cabinets by taking them off, take off the knobs, properly label them. Uh, after that we will sand and degloss to make sure the finish is off so that the paint sticks to whatever cabinets we're painting. Uh, after that we'll prime, sand, and then prep with caulk and wood fill uh, just to make sure it looks really well. Um, and then after that we'll jump into the paint and the job today what we'll do is a uh, faux finish so we'll put a light gray base coat on all the cabinets and then we'll do a champagne glaze on top so hopefully it'll turn out good uh, we'll see Thing I'm thinking about decorative painting too and the type of work that I do in particular is that it really is like a step-by-step -step process. It's a very creative process but when you're producing what we're doing in the in the world where we have to make a living doing it you can't spend you know all day you know just creating this thing you know and make a living at the same time so like everything that we do with faux finishing is broken down into steps you know so I think in to Chris, it actually clicks in his mind because of that. I had a saxophone professor once tell me, uh, practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. Because if you practice something wrong, then you'll forever play it wrong. Um, but if you practice something to the best of your ability and perfect, then you'll eventually become the closest you can to perfect. Um, and I apply that in all my life, you know, uh, or at least I try to um, because we are human and we won't ever be perfect, but um, there's a sense of pride in uh, being happy with something you do and that's what I try to strive for, um, especially in recovery, you know, I've done so much bad that I just want to feel good now, you know, and these small little things bring me joy, you know. I like cabinets a lot for that reason, you know. I met Tara and Shannon. Um, really, I met them um, without actually meeting them. Um, I would see them around because like-minded people will always find each other. 
Um, and I was a sick drug addict trying to find help. So there's places you can go to congregate. And uh, uh, I would see them, I would hear them talk about things, and I would do a lot of listening. And as the years went on, um, Shannon plays music, come to find out, and a mutual friend was like, hey, did you know this guy plays piano? I actually, um, I heard him playing piano uh, at one of the places we meet at, and uh, he was playing, um, I love it when you call me Big Papa, by Biggie Smalls, on the piano. And, uh, but he changes the words a little bit, and he says, I love it when you call me Papa Rocca. Uh, when I finally purchased a set of drums, uh, I had about a year clean. And um, I really was just, I, want, I wanted to play music so bad. You know, I had given it up for so long. And, and I knew Chris was a, a very good musician. So uh, I reached out to him. Me and Shannon started as a jam session. Mikey started the company and he found out he played guitar and Mikey brought Austin and uh, the rest is history. This project is different. Uh, I've been in original bands before, um, but the main difference and the obvious answer is we're all recovering drug addicts. And in music, um, you're at bars, uh, you're around people who like to do drugs. Um, uh, they look to you and they wanna give you drugs because you were on stage. Um, and so to be in a, a sober mindset where everybody in the band is so sober, not influenced by any drugs, um, but that's part of the excitement of it. You know, like you get to experience music for what it is and not because I was under the influence and it made me feel good because I was high. It's like, it made me feel good and I wasn't high, which is an even better feeling. I absolutely love Chris. Uh, I love Chris's ability to listen and learn. Um, I love that he's able to be humble, to sort of like stop and acknowledge that he really doesn't know how to do something. And I think because of that, he's really able to kind of like take all of that information in and really listen and produce something beautiful, you know. Uh, Chris, I, I think Chris doesn't think he's artistic, but he's a musician, number one. And um, Chris actually is very creative. He's very, he has a very creative mind, and I think that his ability to actually produce something with his hands is being sort of cultivated right now, and he's doing an amazing job at it. And the type of mind that he has, he remembers everything. everything. Yeah. When I find something I like, I obsess over it, and I will compulsively go out and do it without any thought. Um, and that allergic reaction makes me feel so good, man. Um, drugs at first are so fun. I would be lying if I said they weren't fun because I had a great time on them. But the problem is I had no self-control. I was a slave to drugs. It would always reach that point too because every relapse I ever had, I would be like, I can control this. I know I can control this. Alcohol, it's not considered a drug amongst most people. I consider it a drug now, but it's socially acceptable. And I was like, I can control this. And I never could, it would just lead to the next, to the next, to the next. And I would always be in that spot, man. And one drug leads to another, which leads to another. And before you know it, um, you know, I'm stealing to supply a habit you know and I get arrested and my parents were like hey man like we'll help you out but like follow these rules and then I would just like appease them I would be like hey like look how good I'm doing um, but really deep down inside all I can think about was like when's enough time where I can start doing this again um, and then things I would say from the first time like I would never do this and I would never do that I would start using drugs again and I did all those things I said I wanted to do. Um, stealing from stores, hanging out with the worst people in the worst places. Um, and for a year after all this, and I'm just spiraling down this vortex of just negative negativity and just self-centeredness, um, I would be like, man, I'm gonna quit. Today's the day I'm gonna quit. And I would wake up the next day and where's the next one? And then I would get it and I'd be like, oh, I'm gonna quit, I'm gonna quit. And I was screaming out for help internally, but I was so powerless, I could not stop.
We just finished the sanding and deglossing uh, portion, and so now we're on to the priming. And uh, it's important, uh, especially with the primer I'm using, it's a bin primer, it's an alcohol-based primer. Um, it dries extremely fast. Uh, but when you sand it, it sands like glass. You'll feel it and it's so smooth. Uh, but the problem is trying to get it on even. So I like to use a one inch art brush and I use a foam roller. The foam roller will give your paint like a spray paint texture to it, uh, which is important. Um, but I'm not worried about coverage of the paint. I'm more worried about how evenly it's uh, applied. Uh, because when we go to sand it down, if you have rough spots in a certain spot that's not even, it's going to take a lot to get that out. So might as well do it right now so the next step isn't as hard. In the grip of addiction, uh, you'll do anything to get your next drug. Um, you steal from your family, you steal from your friends, you steal from uh, businesses, and you're just riding around town and it becomes a full-time job. Um, and uh, when you're high, you don't feel feelings, uh, but you can't be high all the time. And a lot of the time, when you're not high anymore, you start like, things start festering in yourself and you realize like what you have done and you're already in a hole that you can't get out of. Like I got this in pawn and, I, and I'm doing this and all this and that and, uh, and you're like, dude, tomorrow's the day, I gotta quit. And then you wake up the next day and you're sick. You are physically sick, you are mentally sick and emphasis on physically sick, you need something bad. And so you just think of the next scam, like it just never happened. And then you get high and then you don't think of any of it again. So for, you, for a year, like doing that over and over again, like hustling, I could have a drugs, uh, a pocket full of drugs. And you would think like, you don't have to think about it anymore. But I'd be like, what's the next scam? Because I know T minus this amount of time, it's going to be out and you best be prepared what's next, you know? Uh, but being powerless over, like, over it like that, screaming out for help. I need help. I need help. And then eventually my sister um, caught me and she was like, do you want help? And I was like, yes, I need help. And thank you so much. And even when she did catch me though, I was still so powerless. Like, I was like, do I need help? Do I really need help? But I knew I did. And she stuck by me, sat next to me. She was like, you're gonna go to detox and we're gonna get you help. And uh, once I got out of detox, man, I knew I was done, man. The highs were never high enough and there was no bottom to the lows, man. And I never wanted to go back where I was before, man. Um, and it takes work, man. Like every day is, especially early on, is, is work. Um, but eventually, you know, like you lose the desire to use, but I need to remain diligent and hang around people who help me become a better person who are not using drugs. And I gravitate, to, gravitate towards those people. Words can't describe how sorry I am for the things that I've done. Actions right now can prove to the people I love the most how sorry I am by staying clean, by doing good things, by becoming a productive member of society. But like, the damage I caused is huge. The hope started for me day one moving to Wilmington. I think I was so trapped in the area I was in and the negativity and the pain I was in for such a long time and to go to a new place and be like, wow, like I get to start over. Not with support from people I love, you know, like the sense of community. 
And my friend Casey uh, likes to say that you're the average of the five people you hang out with the most. So I best find five great people to hang out with. Uh, but being part of a community, man, uh, with like-minded individuals who want to stay clean will help you stay clean. Looking back, when I was like a music major, back in that insecurity, uh, um, self-conscious, you know, behavior, that's self-centeredness in a way because I'd always be like worried about what I look like towards other people. Um, working on yourself in a clear mind without drugs around people who will like keep it real with you, you learn about how to love yourself. And as of today, I love myself. I don't know what the future holds, but today I love myself, man. And I get to work for uh, incredible people um, doing something I'm really starting to love. And, uh, and I mean, what else can you ask for, man? I think in every project, there's something that you always look back on uh, and you always will be like, I could have done this better. To get deeper, yeah, I'm very satisfied for what I did, but I think what makes you a good at anything you do is you always look back and critique so next time you can do a better job. Uh, but all in all, I feel good about the project, you know? I think they turned out absolutely amazing. Um, we had one idea in mind uh, when we started the project and because of the lighting in the space it wasn't looking exactly the way that we wanted it to so we sort of had to take a left turn and try something else and it actually turned out spectacular. When I met Chris um, he didn't feel even worthy enough, his own words, not mine, he didn't feel worthy enough to play music with us. Um, and, and so that was just like, that kind of sums up who Chris was. He didn't feel good enough. Uh, he didn't feel worthy enough, uh, and uh, which is, in my opinion, why he worked. Being such a smart man and so driven in who he is, just to see him like transform, man, into this confident, driven, um, attentive, grateful, reliable, committed individual. Like it's been, it's been a beautiful thing to watch, you know, and, and a lot of that stuff he didn't form in of the essence designs. It just kind of got molded more. You know, he had all of those things before he came to us. Mm -hmm. It's just taken a different shape, honestly. And it's, and it's just shown its face a little differently. Finally, I got some help, man. I moved to Wilmington and it felt like a vacation. You know, using drugs was a full-time job for me, man. Scamming, uh, doing whatever I could. And when I finally got here, I felt like I could breathe, but that wasn't enough, man. That's where the work has to start. You know what I mean? Like just because I was okay then doesn't mean I would always be okay in the future. Um, so I met Shannon and Tara. Uh, Kindred spirits will always find each other. And uh, I was working in a sandwich shop, making sandwiches, uh, not going anywhere in my life. And uh, I wanted to learn a trade and make some money and have a good way of life. So they gave me a shot, man. And a year later, here I am, man. Um, and it feels good, man. Um, Got to find a sense of community and people who care about me. And I don't need psychiatry because I got real friends, man, who keep me in check and uh, tell me how to live. So that's all I got, man. So for my word, I chose insecurity. Uh, a lot of times I didn't feel okay with myself, man, but I finally found people that tell me I'm okay with who I am today. So uh, I throw it in the fire to be okay with myself today. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Hey. Man, you gotta work from the inside out.
you know? Uh, a lot of people, like, they get off of drugs, they wanna buy shoes, hats, all these things to make them feel good. But guess what, man? You gotta work from the inside out, dude. You have to work in here. You gotta remember what having morals is like, how to treat other human beings, man. But eventually, like, you know, I got four years clean and uh, I still need work. <laughs> I'm not perfect, you know? I'm not sitting here trying to preach to everybody like, look how good I am, you know what I mean? But like each day is a new day. Um, and as long as like, I can look back from a year from now and be like, like I accomplished some things, like it will make me feel good, you know? But just stay in the day. You don't have to worry about tomorrow.